Before yesterday, I used to think that our autonomous driving future was a relatively simple affair. Take a bunch of sensor data, identify what is what, avoid things, accelerate, brake, and turn a car. But after watching Tesla's AI day, I have newfound respect for our software engineers, designers, and people at the forefront of this emerging field. Over the next 10 minutes, I'll unpack yesterday's event and delve into what it's going to mean and where we'll see Level 5 Autonomy. As we know, Tesla cars have 8 cameras that feed a computer raw data from them. But how does this video translate from this to this? As humans, we translate information from our sensory network, think eyes, ears, touch, etc., and drive a car without thinking just how incredibly complex it is. Per second, you're unconsciously calculating things like how fast the car is going, where will that bike rider be in 5 or 10 seconds from now, and what would happen if that kid over there jumps out. So imagine the task of taking all that data into our brain and making a computer version of it instead. From Tesla AI Day, we learned that Tesla divides the vision from those eight cameras into multiple streams of processing. Seen here is one of the residual neural networks and its job might be to process objects like car recognition. Look at this pixel. Is that maybe a car? Maybe yeah. Is this pixel a curb? Okay. Our world is incredibly complex, so add to that traffic lights, lane detection, and more. In a contextual way, as humans, we know that when we look at a curb, yeah, it is. But to a computer, unless it's trained and is, uh, can understand what that bunch of pixels is, it could be anything and everything. So after a lot of technical computer science stuff, which was way over my head, we learned how Tesla has tried and failed, tried and failed many thousands of times to get what they believe is the right way to get to level 5 autonomy, with a pure vision system that looks like this. What you're seeing here is a feed from the 8 cameras and a vector map. This current version didn't used to look like it, nope, it used to look more like this. A system of taking a single frame from a video feed, remembering that it could be like 20 frames, 25 frames per second, and labeling them, assigning values like, is this thing moving? Is that a stop sign? Mimicking essentially what we do. But this wasn't good and required significant CPU power to do anything relatively well. And if the labeling library didn't have something in that database set, it would then fail and edge case scenarios would obviously make the car stop. If we're to see truly autonomous cars, they need to be able to handle real world situations like a single bi-directional road and two cars want to actually traverse it. Is this car going to go first or will this one? As humans, we make value calls based upon is there available space for my car to perhaps pull over or to signal, hey, you can come first. But after many versions, they ditched this model and went for pure vision and vectoring, which is incredibly hard. The first version looked, uh, looked very messy. You're looking at an intersection with turn markers. Can decisions about where to be on the road and where to go next aren't very clear. The problem was that they needed to correct each camera and align them to a unified vector mapping, mapping solution. This fusion ends up creating a representation of object speed and planning all occurring simultaneously. And the result, the V2 vector map now looks more like this. It's amazing to think that this processing is going on in a car that is, to paraphrase Elon Musk, basically a supercomputer on wheels. It's an amazing feat. And what's more impressive, Analysis and planning is occurring up to 15 seconds ahead. 15 seconds! Can you actually fathom just how impressive that is? When you're next driving, think about, okay, process in eight different directions, that is before a computer, gigabytes of data, 
what will be occurring for the for that car that car that car that person over there that kid that ball and do so more than 30 more well, 35 times per second no doubt in my mind when tesla succeeds at this their cars will actually be the safest thing out there tesla is actually doing thousands of lab experiments and simulations like this i mean check out the graphics it looks real doesn't it this is from the data labeling and projection section of the video and details how they're using highly detailed simulations to see how the system assigns, labels, predicts and behaves in a pseudo real world. It means that they can tweak a line of code here or there, run it again and see if it improves reliability and safety. Because after all, there will no doubt, there will no doubt be a situation where people might be running on a freeway with a dog. Autonomous cars will need to understand this and safely how to navigate around them. If you ever played like Flight, Sim, Flight Sim or maybe Gran Turismo, you'll know that graphics can sometimes look too real, that is to say hyper real. And to reflect real world conditions in a simulation, what Tesla has done is they've actually done sensor simulations like smudge to camera, overexposed lighting, put in some motion blur and more. We learned that this simulation experiments are vitally important to speed up autonomy. To date, they've done almost 600 million kilometers in a computer and learnings from it are already actually in Tesla cars for pedestrian bikes and more. To get this much computing done, Tesla detailed how they do 1 million valuations per week using three data centers and 3,000 autopilot FSD computers. That's basically 10,000 GPUs and is more than five times, uh, well, excuse me, is up there with the top five supercomputers in the world. This is where Project Dojo comes in tasked with creating a supercomputer system that can do these simulations and translate it to cars that operate independently in our near future, they created their own chips that has some impressive capabilities. A modular chip design, it can do 10 terabits per second, 576 high speed, low pass lanes, that's more than two times what current chips can do today. With more than 50 billion transistors on it and almost 18 kilometers of wires, all in something that you can hold in your hand. Amazing. And it gets better. The designed a multi core system bunched them all together, which is capable of doing nine petaflops of computing with a massive amount of bandwidth coming out of it. And this is real. Okay, time for something completely different. Uh, okay, that <laughs> was bad, very bad. Tesla, can you please not do that again, honest to goodness. Anyhow, beyond autonomous cars, we learned that Tesla is planning on making its own Android robot. Yeah, robot, but obviously it looks a lot sexier than the Boston Scientific versions we're used to seeing. Elon started out saying that this will be for, for repetitive, labor-intensive tasks like putting bolts in a car, but later he said this. It should be able to, you know, please, you know, please go to the store and get me the following groceries, um, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think we can do that. Elon said that they will have a prototype available next year, so watch your space. My takeaway from this AI update by Tesla is that they have made tremendous improvements since they last showed it in 2019. What they showed was very sensitive, I think, IP, and no doubt other autonomy providers will integrate it into their systems, but I guess this is why they did it, to actually poach some of those people who may be working for Waymo right now. Obviously, there is a way to go. And this is why Tesla is doing this AI day. They're looking actively for software and hardware engineers and people who are well-versed in AI. 
early in the video, they showed this situation in India that I would, <laughs> I would actually struggle to navigate. And so that begs the question, when might we see full self-driving? At least in beta 9 format that some lucky Americans are actually using right now, my help, well, my understanding after today's presentation is that it's not going to be anytime soon. I have serious doubts that we'll see homogenized versions for markets outside of the US. I honestly think it's going to be a year or two. Yep. The new supercomputers, learnings to date, and how some aspects of AI training are being done much faster and exponentially growing. But we have to remember, this training to date has only just been for the United States. The same thing will need to occur for every single market that Tesla sells in. Our local road conditions, signage, layout, road rules, they all need to be homogenized or applied to this uh, computer. And that in time, that takes time as well. So it may be disappointing to people to hear from me, my prediction, but honest to goodness, I actually think this is going to be something that is a way off. I encourage you to please go and check out the video. The main bulk of it is only about one hour and a bit, and there's questions at the end. Uh, all of it is about almost two hours of watching, but it is definitely well worth your time, especially if you're interested in this. So please do go check it out. I left the link down below. And hey, if you have enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, it's free. And if you want to support the channel at the next level, from as little as $2.50 per month, join me over here on Patreon, where you get early access to news, behind the scenes, polls, and a lot more. And as per usual, please, you be good and you be great.